On the 18th of March 1858, a German family that was living in the city of Paris had a son named Rudolf, Rudolf Diesel. That last name is very familiar, so let's see how that name came to be. When Rudolf reaches the age of 12, a huge problem occurs because there's a war between France and Germany. And since the Diesel family was German that they were living in France, they were forced to escape to England and find a way back to Germany. And after a few months, they're successful. Rudolf was a very intelligent boy because he spoke fluently in three different languages, German, French, and English. And he was so fluent that he could write poems in all three languages. Alongside all these talents, he was a very great piano player. Rudolf graduates with great grades, and since he was so intelligent, they allowed him to enter one of the newest universities in Munich. It was called the Technical Munich University, and this school changed his life forever. Rudolf gets to know a man named Karl von Lind, but he wasn't a fellow student. He was actually one of the youngest professors there. At the only age of 30, he was one of Diesel's professors. And since they were so like-minded, they became very good friends. You have to know that these two were very arrogant in a way, and they thought no one in the world is as smart as them. But once they met each other, they were very impressed by one another, and it was rare for people like this. When Rudolf Diesel is one of Carl's students, Carl is designing a machine that could produce ice. But he hasn't perfected the design yet, and he continues working on it. And the funny part is, as soon as Diesel graduates from the university, Carl decides to hire him to help him out. And he thought that he would be the perfect engineer to finish a product like this. Since Diesel was impressed by Carl Lind, he accepted the job and entered Carl's laboratory. This partnership was just the beginning of a company called Lind. And this is their logo, you've probably seen it before. Nowadays, they produce different types of gases. But what we're talking about is the end of the 19th century when this company is just beginning. And Carl Lind and Rudolf Diesel are creating patents left and right and inventing different types of things. After a while of working there, Rudolf Diesel did not like working there because anything he came up with, anything he invented, he would get paid for it. But all the names would be pointed at Linde because he was working for the Linde company. Even though Carl was giving a hefty amount of money to Diesel and he was one of the higher ups, but still his name would never be on the invention he created. And he was not a fan of that. He didn't care about money as much as his name. So long story short, Rudolf Diesel quits his job. And at first he really didn't know what to do. But one thing catches him off guard and that's steam engines. The funny thing is, anything that Diesel knew about engines was taught from Carl Lind. And that's why we say Carl Lind truly changed his life, because if it wasn't for him, he wouldn't be interested in engines. But when he started studying steam engines, he thought to himself, there's no way that this engine produces barely any power, and it requires all this fuel. And there's gotta be a way to make this engine more efficient. So this is when he rents out a laboratory to start experimenting. He would bring different steam engines into the laboratory and add different gases to the engine just to see how you can make it more efficient and use less fuel and create more power. He would perform very dangerous acts like he would add ammoniac acid into the engine, something that's very toxic. Or he would create a lot of compression in the engine just to see what happens, where in a way it actually exploded destroying his entire laboratory. If you would look inside his laboratory, it would look like a grenade went off. But thankfully, Diesel did not get hurt. The thing was, Diesel was not scared of anything. This didn't even trigger him, so he went right back to experimenting with dangerous substances. But after this, it didn't take long before Rudolph's eyesight went bad. And it was probably with the things he was working, mainly the gases he was experimenting with. But since it was still the end of the 19th century, the doctors didn't know it's the gas causing this. They thought he's just getting old so he needs glasses. So he would put very strong glasses to properly see. After a while, he got rid of the steam engine and started experimenting on gasoline engine something that was still being worked on. He thought to himself, if the fuel explodes with spark, 
why can't it explode with pressure? And you could say this was the very first idea of the diesel engine. In simple terms, if you don't know how a diesel engine works, is that instead of a spark plug creating spark and causing an explosion, in a diesel engine, it's all happening because of compression. There is so much compression that the diesel fuel literally explodes. And if you're interested in knowing how a diesel engine works, we have a complete video on it on our channel. But how did Rudolf Diesel come up with the idea to create an engine that works with compression? It's because earlier on, he had created a type of fuel from oil that was very different from gasoline. He had a created a fuel that was named after him, diesel. Rudolf worked in his laboratory for four years straight. And when I say four years straight, I really mean it. He didn't take a day off. And most days he was in there for 18 hours long. Eventually, in the year 1896, he had created the very first concept of a diesel engine. Even though it was the very first diesel engine and it was still a concept needed to be worked on, it was still 26% more fuel efficient than any other thing at that time. And it was already blowing people's minds. Even though it was an impressive engine, it still had many issues and he couldn't run it on different things like trains and ships. This is when Rudolf takes it to the next level. He dedicates every hour of his life to make the diesel engine better and make it as efficient as possible. This is when he locks himself in the laboratory and works all day and all night. Until four years after, he finally slows down. But this was because of a nervous breakdown he had for working four years straight. After a while, he was finally let go of the hospital and he went right back to work, but he took it a little bit more easier. Even though the diesel engine is not perfect, but it's still famous worldwide. And the person that holds the patent is Rudolf Diesel himself. And this caused them to make a lot of money. Different factories, different companies would come make deals with him to use his patent and experiment on it. And without working, he was making plenty of cash. After reaching his big break, he didn't feel like working on engines in a laboratory anymore. He had neglected his family for years on end, and it was finally time to hang out with them. So he let go of everything and solely hung around with his family and friends. Fast forward to the year 1913, the diesel engine is slowly taking over the world. You can find them in different trains, different ships, and also different cars. On the 29th of September 1913, Rudolf Diesel decides to board a ship called the SS Dresden and it was going from Germany to London, so it was taking the English Channel. At 10 p.m., Rudolf was eating dinner and when he finishes at 10.45, he tells one of the employees, please wake me up at 6.45 tomorrow morning and he goes to bed. When 6.45 arrives, the person comes inside the room to wake Diesel up but he realizes that nobody's in the room. Even the bed is untouched, where the pajama is neatly piled on top of the bed, so it seems like nobody slept here. He decided to go around the ship to ask if they've seen Rudolf Diesel. Since he was a very well-known man, there's a chance they might have seen him, but nobody said anything. After looking for a while, they realize that his clothes are on top of the ship deck, near the edge. And that made it seem like he got to the edge, took his clothes off, and jumped off the edge. And this is where most people said it was a suicide. The English Channel is a violent type of water and anyone that jumps in there will most likely die. But when they spoke to Diesel's family and friends, every single one of them said a negative answer on how he would never kill himself. We know him and he wouldn't do that. 10 days later, a Dutch ship was passing in the English Channel and they saw a body floating. They took it up on board and examined it. They realized that they couldn't identify it, but he had some stuff in his undershirt. It was his wallet, but the IDs weren't identifiable. They threw the body into the sea again, but they brought the personals. And when they asked Diesel's family if this belongs to him, his son approved that this was his wallet and that's how they realized that however he was killed, he was killed in the English Channel. A lot of people say that Diesel committed suicide, but most people do not believe that because there's more to the story than we think. 
What is the reason he was going to London? They later realized the reason Diesel is going to England was to meet English authorities, specifically the Royal Navy, and they wanted to buy their rights to the diesel engine or become a shareholder. And this was going to make Rudolf Diesel a whole lot of money because now he was dealing with the government. So the first theory is whoever killed him did not want this deal to go down. The first suspect on the list is the German government. The Germans knew that they wanted Rudolf Diesel engine to put on their submarine and this design would make their submarines that much stronger. So of course, there's a lot of tension in this era of the world, especially Europe. And the number one tension is between France, Germany and England. So if one of your people, meaning Rudolf Diesel, which is a German, is selling an important invention to your enemy, what is the thing you're going to do? But either way, if he was killed or not killed and committed suicide, we really don't know because there's no proof that he did commit suicide and there's no proof that he was killed. But all we know is that the Diesel name remains on the fuel and the engine. So Diesel's name lives through history.